I want to introduce to you the subjects of Warner Brothers' new film, The Killing Fields. First, Mr. Dith Pran. Sitting alongside him is Sidney Schonberg. They are respectively translator journalist and New York Times journalist. I'm John Tibbetts. We're talking about The Killing Fields, the adventures, the turmoil, the friendship over there. The first thing I wanted to ask both of you is the portrait of children that we saw in revolutionary Cambodia, year zero. The children that you saw there. Could I address you first, Pran? Well, this is to show that the Cambodian communist Khmer Rouge, they use a lot of those uh, children because I think, because easy for them to brainwash, so-called, so easy to train. And they were the masters, weren't they? It seemed as if they were. Yes, you, uh, really, I was scared to death for those kids because, uh, you know, they, they have no religion. They don't believe anything. Only they believe only the leadership. So, you know, so you never your life, know. Your life was in the balance many times, not at the hands of the adults, but from the children? From the children is worse than the adult. Adult, I believe that at least they have something in the heart, but the children, so too young, they have no experience about how to deal with the people uh, friendly or, you know. Now you saw this firsthand while you were there, striving to return across the border. Sidney Schonberg, your own experience with the children now in Cambodia, how could you fill, begin to fill in what is happening with the children then? You're talking about the, not the children of the Khmer Rouge. The children of the Khmer Rouge that we were talking about, the year zero now. Well, first of all, when we first met the Khmer Rouge, when they marched in the Phnom Penh on April 17th, 1975, their soldiers were young and there were many children among them already. And we were struck, stunned even, by the kind of dead-eyed, robotic look they had. And we had some embryonic conversations with them in an attempt to relax them or get them to loosen up or even smile. It was impossible. There were close-ups in the film where I thought that glassy-eyed look was conveyed quite frighteningly. And I think that was, that's accurate, and I think that everybody who talks about them, who's met them, knows that mm -hmm. that's true. Let's compare notes in a personal fashion. As a parent, well, both of you are parents. You are a doctor as well. No, no I am not. The I'm man who the, plays Pran is a doctor. I'm getting the, the confusion there. But you it's both easy. are parents. Now, right. that is a sufficient reason to empathize with maybe your own children as opposed to the children that you saw over there. What goes through your mind when you think of the differences? Your children, the children there. Well, uh, my family was lucky because uh, they left uh, before the communists took over. But if they dare or if they grab one of my child and to brainwash, I think they can do the same thing. It could happen then. You, can, oh, you yes. look at your own children and you think maybe it could Well, there's another, there's another story of children in this film. I mean, the, the Khmer Rouge children, if a child is totally, if the word is brainwashed, and he is now a, a psychopath, there, there may be nothing you can do for that child. But the other children, the children who uh, were not taken in by the Khmer Rouge, who suffered through this period of history, whom you also see in the film, and who are now living in refugee camps along the Thai-Cambodian border, they're the victims of this mm -hmm. uh, in a worse way, uh, let's say, because they can be saved and they're not being saved. But are you afraid that the die has been cast with the youth of that country now still living within the borders? Uh, not necessarily, because not. Uh, you have to remember that, that the army of the, the Khmer Rouge numbered 70 to 80,000. They probably had a youth corps. Maybe there's another couple of hundred, 300,000. They didn't have every child brainwashed. They, every child wasn't a gun-toting cadre. So no, I don't think that whole generation is gone. And, uh, and I don't think they were all as d dedicated to the killing. I mean, if a person has been killing over a period of time, just taking people out and executing them, then you may have a psychopath who cannot be saved. Let's talk about the generation two in America that came out of Vietnam, as did I, in 1973 after four years in the military, I was guilty of wanting to turn my back on that whole conflict, the surrounding territories, the complexities therein. Ten years, twelve years later, 
it's as if it's ancient history because I don't understand it. I so successfully turned my back on it. Am I one of millions that you would like to address and have addressed already in your own journalistic efforts, the both of you? Well, I think so, but I don't, I mean, for, for me, I don't know how Pran feels. It doesn't seem like 10 years since Cambodia fell. It seems very close. Um, but it is a history that is remote from many Americans. Well, it's not, that it's not part of our history. It's not in our mm -hmm. books. It's not in our literature. It's not in our consciousness. Um, there are many reasons for that. First of all, Cambodia was never really important to the government and our policy. It was a place, a, a country to use for another larger, a perceived larger purpose uh, to get our troops out of Vietnam. The other great powers used Cambodia in the same way. They probably cared less about Cambodia. So no one's ever really been concerned about the Cambodian people mm -hmm. and their culture. Secondly, people did want to forget about Vietnam. It was a painful period of our history. I mean, not just Vietnam, Indochina. Having a war go on that long, having casualties rise above those of uh, the Korean War and be losing uh, a, a war, uh, that's a problem for the American people who don't like to lose and don't understand losing and didn't understand what we were doing there and wanted to put it behind them. And I don't think that's necessarily true anymore. There may be enough distance now, uh, psychic and, and, and time distance, to be able to look at this period of history. That sense of distance, Pran, did you feel over there when you were alone, surviving, did you feel at all abandoned or had you taken the responsibility of your own decision? No, I never think about that because I decide myself to stay there because I used to cover uh, all the story around mostly the average people and uh, and I like to see what happening when the war is over and I didn't believe that after the war is over they the new government would kill millions of people the like this. The character who portrays you jumps out into the streets joyful when the Khmer yes, Rouge come in. Yes, that's what I uh, did the same thing when I was there. I really enjoy myself and I say, well, we're going to cover about the joyous of the people after when the Khmer Rouge come to the capital. How much of this do you want to keep as what's past is past? And how much of it has become a mission now for you to inform others about? Obviously, the film will do just that. But personally, do you want to put some of it behind you, or do you, are you satisfied with reliving it over and over again as the film was made? Well, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a mixture for me. I mean, the, you make a decision to, uh, to make the film. At the time you do that, at least the time I did it, I was euphoric. Pran had escaped, and I was high, and I was optimistic about life and positive about everything and didn't look ahead to imagine what it might feel like to have this uh, period of time relived over and over again. So there's, it's a mixed blessing. I don't want to put the period behind me and lock it away in a closet, but neither do I want to have it out in front of me every day. Uh, it's a bit difficult to keep doing that. I'm not on a mission, although I think that the film, I mean that's why I'm here today talking to you, if we didn't feel passionately about the film, and we didn't want people to see it in great numbers, uh, we wouldn't be here. And, and we want them to see it because uh, it's going to, it will reach many, many more people than ever my articles did. And hopefully the children. Hopefully it will reach the children well, as well. I, I would hope so. Dith Pran, Sidney Schonberg, thank you so much. And for that reminder on film now for our children as well. This is John Tibbetts in New York City for KCTV 5.